Hi, my name is Shoshana Reznikoff and I'm a curator at the Wolfsonian FIU. And today we're gonna look at uh, propaganda from three different countries, Germany, Great Britain, and the United States during World War II and uh, see what their techniques and messages are. And one thing that's important to note before we begin is that these are just a couple of examples. Um, uh, they by no means represent all of the propaganda produced by these countries. Um, uh, different organizations within these countries would produce different kinds of propaganda for different audiences. So it's important to keep that in mind as we go through that this is definitely not exhaustive. Um, to get, begin though, we're going to start by looking at this poster from Germany produced in 1938. One thing that's really important to understand and remember about propaganda in Nazi Germany is that uh, the Nazi party was not just interested in convincing uh, the people of Germany to go to war or even uh, just that their racist and anti-Semitic uh, a worldview was justified. They were interested in creating an entirely new society, one that was built around in many ways, um, uh, ethnic hierarchies um, and, and certainly built around an idea of, of power and of dominance over Europe and the world. Uh, but it was a whole new society that they were trying to build. So a lot of their posters and a lot of their propaganda is aimed at um, at German audiences, convincing them of the superiority of this Nazi world viewpoint and the superiority of the Aryan race. Um, so this is a poster, as I said, from 1938. It's called Neues Volk, uh, 1938, The New People of 1938. Um, and it is promoting a certain kind of person and a certain kind of lifestyle um, as the ideal German. And so you can see here, there's this very large man. Um, he quite dwarfs the woman. The scale is very odd, um, uh, but we're meant to see him as a protector. Um, and he has this very high forehead. He's got blonde hair, um, as does she. We know that um, Aryan ideals of beauty are blonde haired, blue eyed, uh, fit, healthy, a real focus on muscularity um, and the idea of like a healthy body being representing a healthy country. Um, uh, the tall forehead is also interesting in European, uh, in Western art history, um, uh, high foreheads were seen as, a, as an indicator of intelligence and wisdom. And so of course they both have very high foreheads. Uh, we're supposed to believe they're very smart. Um, uh, and, and again, um, uh, uh, she is also dressed quite uh, skip, with, with very little clothes, but what she is wearing is um, is a toga, um, that sort of a sort of one shouldered garment. Um, and um, uh, in Nazi ideology, there was a lot of um, reverence for um, classicism, and especially ancient Greece, as this idea um, and, and a place of kind of great wisdom and and um, sort of intellectual purity. Um, uh, and so. So the, the toga is sort of a reference to that as well. Um, and behind them though, there is an eagle, um, uh, the, the, um, the national bird of Germany um, and a symbol of the Nazi um, regime and one that sort of um, speaks to strength and also to kind of a warlike identity. And so together this poster creates a sense of um, of a new society, one built on, on, on uh, traditional classical values um, that's about a certain kind of person, a certain ethnicity of person um, that, that gets to enjoy the sunshine and the beautiful land and the beautiful ocean, but also is prepared to, to fight if necessary. The small child is also important when you're building a new society, who are you building it for the next generation um, and the use of children as a, as a weapon, um, an ideological weapon in propaganda is one that we see coming up quite a bit in Nazi propaganda, but also we'll see um, in American propaganda as well. Um, the, not, the Nazis, of course, though, did also, you know, it wasn't just about creating a new society. A lot of their, um, a lot of their propaganda was very much focused on war. I want to make that clear. Um, and this is a poster that certainly does that. Um, and this is actually propaganda for propaganda. It was a poster developed to advertise a film that was about um, a documentary about the dismantling of the, the rules of the Versailles Treaty. Um, uh, the Treaty of Versailles was the um, treaty that ended World War I and many Germans felt resentful of the um, economic sanctions and the limitations that, that the treaty put on them. And that was a major promise of the Nazi party as they came to power was that they would dismantle um, uh, the limits of the, of the Treaty of Versailles and sort of take back what they felt was theirs um, uh, in, the, in the region and also sort of in terms of power. And so here you have um, the swastika 
forming a blade, almost a saw blade, cutting through the, the chains of the Treaty of Versailles. Um, uh, and uh, it's very warlike. It's, the swastika is a, is a literal weapon in this, in this case um, uh, to, that can be used to fulfill uh, uh, Nazi promises. And of course, the poster is in red, black, and white, uh, which are the colors of the Nazi flag. And we see that um, kind of using national colors, flag colors, and even flags themselves is something that happens throughout these posters. Um, if you are trying to uh, get people to feel patriotic and even nationalistic, flag colors are a great way to go. Uh, we move to Britain, uh, where, you know, uh, British posters, and we'll also see uh, the, with these designs for the American uh, propaganda coming up next, um, uh, are much less about remaking society. You know, the, the um, Great Britain, uh, France, the United States, the, the Soviet Union, the Allied, the Allied nations were not concerned with remaking their societies. Um, they were concerned with defending them against the Nazis. And so um, uh, these are very much about, about how to sort of stay calm, um, be prepared, um, and be ready to defend yourself. And so um, the, this poster is particularly uh, effective at that. Britain shall not burn. It's resolute, right? We refuse to let this happen. We are, we are, we are, we stand together to keep this from happening. Um, this is, of course, about about um, Germany's firebombing of 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 Britain, and particularly the, during the Blitz, uh, when that was particularly effective, um, and needing to support the the fire brigades and the fire guard uh, to defend against that. And so again, we see uh, red, white, and blue, the colors of the Union Jack flag, the, the flag of, of the United Kingdoms, um, and the sort of menace of the of the um, German missile coming towards, towards Britain, um, which is something that people should be scared of, but also prepared to stand against, is sort of the message of this poster. Um, uh, an important theme in, a, in both um, uh, uh, British um, propaganda, but also in American propaganda from this period, is uh, volunteerism. The idea that, uh, that we need to come together to, to defeat this and we need everyone. Everyone needs to do their part. Um, so this poster is very explicit. Um, uh, you are wanted to join the ATS. The ATS was the um, uh, Auxiliary Women's Service um, for the British Armed Forces. And uh, this would have been the first time for many women that they were given the opportunity to serve um, in uniform in the Armed Forces. Um, uh, there was a smaller force helping in, in World War One, but this was kind of a, 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 nas a national mobilization of women. Um, and so uh, they're really effective in this poster at using photo montage, which is a technique of combining so it's collage with photography. Um, and so you have this very large woman who's meant to represent the you, the individual, um, uh, her importance to the mission uh, is, is denoted by her scale. You are valuable, you are wanted. Um, uh, and she, you can see her full uniform, so you can kind of get that sense of this is what it will be like to be in uniform. But then below is the army, right, are all those men. Um, and so it is the you which contributes to the, to the us, to the we, uh, which will defeat the enemy. Um, and again, um, the color blocking is in red, white, and blue, which is, again, the colors of the Union Jack flag. So an, another reminder of that sort of patriotic nationalist uh, identity. Um, uh, the flag plays an important role in this poster, and so too does the photo montage. We've now moved to the United States, um, and, and we can see um, uh, that this poster effectively uses both those techniques, uh, uh, patriotic flag colors, um, in this case, the actual flag, and also photo montage. This poster is interesting, though, because it was um, uh, put together as part of a campaign uh, to promote integration of factories in the United States during, during the war. Um, manpower shortages meant that um, uh, factories, which were building bombs and guns and, um, and planes and tanks for the war effort, needed to recruit um, uh, workers, both black and white. And so um, in order to promote workplace integration, um, uh, especially because many of these factories had never had black employees and many of the white factory workers weren't comfortable, um, uh, um, the poster was meant to um, uh, uh, promote unity and integration, you know, united we win. However, despite the sort of um, uh, 
very idealized concept there, the poster also subtly reinforces the racist, the racist hierarchies of the day. Um, and so we do have the flag at the top and then who's right below it, the white factory worker and who's below him, the black factory worker. And so um, though this is a poster that um, speaks to the idea of unity um, and to the kind of American ideals that we believe we are defending during the war, um, it is also um, uh, reinforcing uh, the really toxic um, uh, racist systems that were also in this country. And so it is an interesting exercise in, in both of those things. Um, Finally, uh, I said, you know, that, that that the German posters, the German uh, propaganda efforts, were very interested in using children as as a as a propaganda tool, um, and certainly other countries do that as well. Um, here, this is a poster uh, that is very much playing on the idea of of, of protecting innocence and and kind of. Um, uh, the of, and, and sort of combating fear. And so you have um, uh, these children who are being um, overshadowed by, you know, the, the menace of the swastika. Um, it's casting a shadow directly on them. Um, and the poster says, don't let that shadow touch them by war bonds. Um, and so this is a direct uh, appeal to, to adults in the United States, certainly especially parents, but really anyone, uh, to protect the next generation by buying war bonds, by supporting the war effort. Um, uh, and um, uh, interestingly, um, uh, it's also, you know, it does get in the American flag. So it's reminded this is, this is our country. This young boy is representing the kind of the next generation of Americans. Um, let's keep them from having to fight. Interestingly, uh, the two boys are sort of militaristic um, in, their, in their toys. We've got um, a young man holding a, a fighter plane and, and uh, the little boy wearing um, uh, a, a paper hat in the shape of like a ship's captain hat from the 19th century. Um, and so there is there is the suggestion that they might have to fight in the future um, uh, if, if this if this swastika, if the Nazis are not are not are not defeated by this generation. Um, and of course, this poster does reinforce gender roles. Um, uh, and also, um, these are white children, these are blonde children. Um, so there is still a little bit of that sort of um, idealized citizenry um, of the United States as well. So I hope um, these analyses uh, are helpful. Um, as I said, there are many, many different examples of propaganda um, from World War II that uh, run the gamut of types and approaches. But these are just some of the ways in which we can see how propaganda from all three of these countries um, uh, reinforced certain or, or um, sold uh, their audiences on a certain set of ideals and also reinforced um, uh, kind of social structures uh, at the same time. Thanks so much.